Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at another standard 2022 deck preparing for the upcoming rotation. And as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, today we're building a deck around Flame Skull, the 3 mana 3 1 mythic rare skeleton from Forgotten Realms. It has flying, it cannot block, and when a Flame Skull dies, we exile it. And if we do, we exile the top card of our library. Until the end of our next turn, we can either play that top card or we can replay Flame Skull out of exile. So it's a powerful, recursive threat that shines in a slightly more controlling red deck that has access to plenty of removal. That way we can play a longer game where we get to take advantage of Flame Skull's recursive abilities. Then we also have a small snow theme in this deck with 22 snow-covered mountains and 4 copies of Faceless Haven, a snow land that can turn into a 4-3 creature with vigilance until end of turn. And then we also have a small dragon theme with a full playset of Goldspan Dragon, one of the more powerful creatures in 22 Standard, as well as two copies of Inferno of the Star Mounts, with four copies of Dragon's Fire as a removal spell that gets better the more dragons we have in the deck. So let's take a look at the rest of our deck here. At one mana we've got a full playset of Frostbite, a one mana Snow Instant dealing two damage to a creature or planeswalker, but if we control three or more Snow Permanents, that includes our lands as well, it deals three damage instead. Then we've got two copies of Shock dealing two damage to any target, so that this can also go to the opponent's face. And the reason Shock is still legal in 22 Standard is because it's in one of the red starter decks, Although we've already seen a preview from the upcoming Innistrand expansion that will have a strictly better shock at 1 mana. Then at 2 mana, we've covered the full playset of a Dragon's Fire, deals 3 damage to a creature or planeswalker, unless we control a dragon or reveal a dragon from our hand, in which case it deals damage equal to that dragon's power. So we can deal 4 damage if we reveal Goldspan Dragon, 6 damage with Inferno instead. Then at 2 mana we've got a full playset of Royal Eruption, a sorcery speed burn spell dealing 3 damage to any target, so it can also go upstairs, and can also be kicked for 5 additional mana, in which case we deal 5 damage to that target instead. So good mana sync using the extra treasures we generate with our Goldspan Dragon. Then besides Flame Skull we also have the full playset of Tundra Fumarole, a snow sorcery dealing 4 damage to a creature or planeswalker, and then we get to add colorless mana to our mana pool for each snow mana spent to cast Tundra Fumarole, and that mana doesn't go away until the end of our turn. And that colorless mana also counts as snow mana, so we can still potentially use it to enable our faceless haven for instance. Then we've got Meteor Swarm, which is more of a 4-drop, since we need to cast it for X equals 1 most of the time, dealing 8 damage divided as we choose among X, target creatures and or planeswalkers. So we can deal 8 damage to one creature or planeswalker for 4 mana, but we can also split that up if we have more mana to invest in our Meteor Swarm, turning it into a pseudo-sweeper. Then at 5 mana, the full playset of Goldspan Dragon, a 4-4 dragon with flying and haste, that whenever it attacks or becomes a target of a spell, we get to make a treasure token, and those tokens make double the amount of mana for as long as Goldspan's in play. And then we've got two copies of the Deck of Many Things as a powerful card draw engine for our mono red deck. 5 mana legendary artifact, for 2 mana we can tap it and roll a d20 and then subtract the number of cards from our hand from that result. If the result is 0 or less, we discard our hand. If we get between 1 and 9, we return a card at random from our graveyard to our hand. Between 10 and 19, we draw 2 cards. And if we roll a 20, which also implies that we're empty handed, we put a creature card from any graveyard onto the battlefield under our control. And when that creature dies, its owner loses the game. So if we can get the opponent's creature in play under our control and the opponent kills it, then they lose the game. So that's often going to be a game winning roll. Then, topping off our curve, two copies of Inferno of the Star Mounts, 6-6, six, six, legendary dragon with flying and haste, cannot be countered, has fire breathing, and if we somehow get it to 20 power, we get to deal 20 damage to any target, so it can potentially be achieved with the extra mana that Goldspan generates. And then, as we mentioned, 22 Snow-Covered Mountains and 4 copies of Faceless Haven, which also has all creature types, so it can potentially enable a 4 damage Dragon's Fire, so that's another relevant interaction. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand is pretty slow, but we do of course have a lot of cheap removal in the deck we can draw in the meantime. So I'm kind of keeping this in the hopes of finding some 1 and 2 mana interaction by turn 3. I'll try it. 
The curve of gold span into Inferno is quite tempting. And then a Meteor Swarm we can cast for X equals 1 if needed, or we can wait on it. And potentially wipe the board with it. Alright, Flame Skull, also nice 3 mana play here. Class Pool Mimic, opponent's Mono Blue so far. Foretells a card. Yeah, we would have been able to curve out beautifully. No target for Royal Eruption at the moment, so... It's gonna be a bit slower than expected. Invasion of the Giants, okay. So we're pointing to Blue-Red Giant Tribal deck. The foretold card could be Quakebringer. Which I'm happy to Meteor Swarm. And yeah, should be a reasonable matchup for Flame Skull. The opponent doesn't really have any way of exiling our creature. Although Agar can potentially get value by uh, killing the Flame Skull. I guess he might have a Crush the Weak, which deals two damage and exiles. Although, probably not in every Giant's deck. So we'll just kill Agar. There's something to be said for Meteor Swarm, because then next turn we could attack with Goldspan and still cast a Royal Eruption with our treasure. But if this is a Quake Bringer, I want to have Meteor Swarm to answer it, since I think it has four toughness, so Eruption would not be enough. It's going to be a backup Agar. And our opponent passes. Okay, so there's a possibility that they have something like Squash in hand. And if I play Goldspan, they squash the Goldspan instead of the Flame Skull. Um, we do have a backup Goldspan. So maybe I just attack a Meteor Swarm Agar anyways. Although it is tempting to wait on Swarm to get a 2 for 1. Do I attack and then just second main Goldspan, not attack with it? Is that just playing around too much? Probably. So we'll play the dragon, and we'll see if they have a squash here. They do. Agar draws a card. All right, and then hopefully they just play another creature and we get to Meteor Swarm before Agar draws some more stuff. There's a Quake Bringer. All right, and this should be a nice clean two for one. Do we think they have another removal spell in hand? Otherwise, what happens if I play gold span attack, have five mana, and I could still Meteor Swarm for two? So that would be the dream. Yeah, let's live the dream. Uh-oh, they've got more removal. I'm gonna get punished if they have another squash. Ouch. That's highly unfortunate. Alright, got punished for my greed. Do I play another Flame Skull? Yeah, I can still Meteor Swarm for three next turn. If they have a Calamity Bearer, we are just dead. It's gonna be a Battle of Frost and Fire, killing both my Flame Skulls instead. Alright, so now what? I have to Meteor Swarm, and then I'm not gonna have enough mana to replay Flame Skull. So that's unfortunate. Yeah, this game would have been better had we not gone for the Gold Span last turn. So as the dust settles, still have an Inferno, a Faceless Haven, and a Flame Skull, but we're out of removal. Bone gets to scry three. Yeah, the double squash on Goldspan was painful. Bone got to draw two with Agar. If we go for just attack with Flame Skull Meteor Swarm, 
Of course, they still have the squash in hand. Wow, double Calamity Bearer. Okay, this uh, keeps us alive. So I can Fumarole play Inferno and I have to stay back. And it's going to be Inferno that trades for Calamity Bearer. Alternatively, I can just animate Faceless Haven to block and trade, which is maybe better. I guess I can animate Haven attack with the three mana that's floating and then still have it back on defense. All right, that feels a little bit better. Because now we can potentially uh, close out the game with Inferno. All right, opponent does go for the trade and then we can play Flame Skull. All right, so that worked out. Got to use the mana from our burn spell. Squash kills Flame Skull, opponent draws from the battle. Squash has put in a lot of work. Although we can replay Flame Skull or Haven play Inferno hit for seven. Yeah, I think Inferno might be better. Opponent is at four, so even if they answer my dragon, they're still dead to Haven. But they could have a hasty giant here. There's the one with Kicker, but our opponent explodes. Oof, what a close game. Despite our greed, we still managed to pull through on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. This hand's not bad. A couple of removal spells, plenty of lands, and then should be able to leverage a deck of many things as our card draw engine. So we'll see what he points up to. Just guy, so points towards a more controlling deck as they foretell a card. Control's not our favorite matchup. Cards like Flame Skull can be effective if it doesn't get countered. And uh, our Faceless Haven, of course, also very useful as a creature land that dodges sorcery speed removal. Opponent with an expressive iteration. Hoping to find a land they can play off of it, which they do. We just play a land and pass, don't have any early pressure. So that's one of the drawbacks of this red deck as opposed to more traditional aggressive red deck that can start applying pressure early with a bunch of cheap creatures. It's gonna be the Raven's Warning. That's okay. Probably just gonna Royal Eruption the Raven and keep my instant speed Frostbite for later. And then if they present a target for Fumarole, we can play that and still play Deck of Many Things afterwards. Would love for them to tap out so we can actually resolve this. Although in Just Sky Colors, they could have something like Rip Apart to still destroy our artifact. So it could be worthwhile to wait to play the deck until we can activate it in the same turn. All right, Scholar of Frosts can draw two. So that's something we could take out with Fumarole and then still play our artifact. Yeah, opponent's going to plus instead. Then we'll frostbite it. And then Fumarole plus deck. So they did get a two for one. But hopefully deck of many things will uh, provide some value too. Our opponent could search for something to destroy our artifact as well. With the third chapter. And our opponent does search for a card. Alright, we'll play a land and then, yeah, I think we spin the wheel. There's a small chance I end up discarding my hand, so it would be better off pointing these at my opponent's face. But just in case I end up destroying the deck, I think I'm better off... Uh, getting my value, and then I want to main phase this in case we draw a Flame Skull, so we can still play it. 
All right, we don't have to discard our hands. Get back Fumarole. That's fine. So we got a little bit of value. Opponent with Lorehold Command. Makes a token which they sacrifice right away, so essentially five mana draw two. And let's see what they search for. Velomachus Lorehold. Yeah, that's gonna connect. Although we can take it out next turn. And our opponent finds Lorehold Commands. Dealing three and making a spirit token. And then probably fine to shock the token here. Goldspan. So what happens if I were to fumarole? I can still goldspan. Yeah, that works. The other option would be just kick troll eruption. But getting to attack with gold span and still activate deck of many things is pretty sweet. And then I'll just go for it now. Draw two. It's going to be Mordekainen with a plus two. Can take that out with double gold span. Flame skull, a nice addition too. Turn Royal Eruption, still decent. So we've got a nice mix of threats here. Flame Skull comes back if they wipe the board, still a Faceless Haven. So don't hate my position. Ah, there's a Doom Scar. Sadly, wiping away our two gold spans. Alright, and our opponent explodes. I guess there's just too much for them to handle between the recursive flame skull, which they may not be able to exile, the faceless haven, and the deck of many things drawing us extra resources. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Our hand's very controlling with only burn spells. But uh, yeah, if we're up against a creature deck, this is fine. And we can also deal damage to planeswalkers with all our spells, so this shouldn't be too much of a problem. The Malison, I think I'm gonna hang on to Frostbite and just Royal Eruption it. So we can keep the instant speed Frostbite for later. And there's Nadar. Yeah, once again, I might just untap Royal Eruption. And then hang on to my Frostbite. So put onto a blue-white adventure deck, make that an Asper colored adventure deck. And Barrowin gonna eat a frostbite, I think. Now we don't have any pressure, so we're just kinda waiting for the opponent to eventually present more creatures. Alright, there we go. Flame Skull is a nice threat. That's not that easy for the opponent to answer. They need to be able to exile it. So it doesn't come back. Another Baruin. Now I'm tempted to Meteor Swarm Baruin. Another Frostbite, sure. Cast a Meteor Swarm. 
8 damage might be a little bit overkill. But once again allows me to keep the cheaper Frostbite for later. Right. Opponent kills Flame Skull. So now we can replay it and play Frostbite potentially. Although if we draw land, Gold Span might be even better. Did not draw the land, but we did draw Fumeral, so I can Fumeral deal 4 to the token. Although I guess we're not going to have enough uh, red mana to replay Flame Skull. So we'll scratch that, just play Flame Skull. And then probably Frostbite the Adventurer before it gets to Venture again. Could also wait and then maybe set up a Meteor Swarm. Can pass a turn and see what else the opponent does here. Opponent's moving to combat. Do we want to kill the adventurer? I think it's okay to take one hit. That way if we draw land so we can maybe Meteor Swarm and kill both creatures at once. Opponent going for the Lost Mine this time. Alright, now I probably have to Frostbite one of the adventurers. Right, land is good. So let's Meteor Swarm for two. And take out both of those. And now as the dust settles, we still have a Flame Skull hitting for three. Up against a Dungeon Crawler, which we can answer pretty easily. So yeah, this kind of showed the resiliency of Flame Skull. Just coming back over and over while we kill the opponent's stuff. Think I can afford to Frostbite the Crawler. Still have a Fumarole. Spellbinder, we can Dragon's Fire, or we can just untap and Fumarole. Doesn't really matter. And our opponent sees the writing on the wall and explodes. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Could use a couple extra lanes, but we are playing 26 and we're on the draw, so I'll try it. So hopefully we're up against a creature deck where our early burn spells come in handy. And red-white typically points towards a creature strategy. Looks like an equipment deck. And Dancing Swords, so opponent playing out more and more equipment. At least we'll be able to kill a creature that they try and equip in response with a Frostbite. And there's Akiri. And just a land away from Goldspan. This time Akiri will stay in play. They can equip Dancing Sword and then we'll get to untap. And then we'll have to Fumeral to deal 4 damage. Also the extra mana goes to waste. Unless they want to turn on Dancing Sword, which they do. Yeah, now I can uh, probably Royal Eruption over Shock. So I keep the instant for later, and I can pay the wards. So a dancing sword down. Next turn we can start applying pressure with our flame skull, or if we draw land, gold span dragon. All right, time for flame skull. So 
So this will hit for six. If we kill it, they get the creature back. Well, probably don't want them hitting me for ten. And they won't be able to replay the Blade Master right away. Alright, that lets us play Goldspan. And now we can try to out-tempo the opponents by killing their Blade Master as they try and re-equip it over and over. Faceless Haven also a good draw. So we can hit for seven. And then a Meteor Swarm for one is enough. A little bit overkill here. But next turn I'll be able to Fumarole and then still turn on my Faceless Haven with the Snow Mana it generates. And our opponent should be dead to our Flyers. And there's Nahiri. Can take out Goldspan with a minus ability. Or they can try and equip Maul, but that's not gonna work out. Fumarole the token. Turn on Haven and attack. Yeah, plenty of removal, so gonna have a pretty good matchup against most creature strategies. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Plenty of lands to play our deck of many things, some removal and a flame skull to start applying a bit of pressure. Up against black white, opponent foretells. Foretells again. Here's a flame skull. And a search for glory, gonna try and find a snow permanent legendary card or saga. It's gonna find Eye of Vecna, I see their opponents trying to assemble Vecna. Yeah, that could be pretty difficult to deal with once they assemble all three pieces. There's the eye. They do still need a few more lands, but they found one. So, hit for three, play a deck of many things, most likely. And then double Fumarole can technically deal with an 8-8 Vecna. So not sure if the foretold cards include Doomscar, they do. Flame Skull gets exiled, reveals Skullspan Dragon, which might be even better than replaying the skeleton here. Yeah, probably. Still have a Faceless Haven and a Kick Royal Eruption can maybe help us cross the finish line. So it's probably unwise to activate Deck of Many Things with five cards in hand. When we're just a Kick Royal Eruption away from potentially winning the game. Another Doomscar, that's fine. So, could risk attacking with Haven, hope they don't have any two-mana removal spell. Now if they have Power Word Kill, it's not going to work on Haven since it has all creature types. If they have Flunk, which would have been a reason to not play my land yet, then it's still only minus two, minus two. So they will need something very specific instead. And then a Royal Eruption for three. Uh, if they did have the Flunk, 
I'll activate deck of many things just out of curiosity. And we get back our gold span. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This is a decent hand if we can pick up some more cheap removal spells. That way we get to leverage the deck of many things as a card draw engine. Turn one Shambling Ghast. So maybe a Sacrifice deck, a black green it looks like. Alright, picked up another Fumarole. Could see a Deadly Dispute end of turn, which sets up 5 mana on turn 3 for the opponent. And yeah, there it is. Now our deck's pretty bad at dealing with enchantments, so for opponent's uh, Skeletal Swarming deck, we're gonna have a bad time. Do have an Evasive Flame Skull that can apply pressure, so we can potentially fly over a bunch of skeletons. Spider Queen, okay. Now Fumarole does deal damage to Planeswalkers. So that's probably the play here. It's Fumarole, Spider Queen. And then Flame Skull's gonna have to slowly chip away at the spider tokens. Ideally we can play Fumarole the same turn we play the deck of many things. So we make use of that callless mana. Night Witch and Innkeeper, they might have wanted to switch around the sequencing there. Alright, Meteor Swarm can clean up some creatures as well. So even though it doesn't block, I think I still go for Flame Skull here. And then next turn I can Fumarole plus play a deck of many things. And then maybe wait for Meteor Swarm for X equals 3. Opponent attacks. Another Eye Twitch. Which can also get in the way of our Flame Skull. Let's attack and see if they block. They could honestly just take it and try and race us. But opponent does go for the trade. Wanna trade before casting Deck of Many Things so they don't get Containment Breach, of course. Gets Confront a Pass, which can get back their Planeswalker. Yeah, I don't think Flame Skull's gonna be great in this matchup, so I don't mind playing Haven. And then Fumarole, one of the spiders. Could also kill the Eye Twitch again, so they don't get Containment Breach. But uh, the spiders dealing a bit more damage here. Alright, so next turn... I can either Inferno or Meteor Swarm. Meteor Swarm is going to be pretty good at cleaning up a Planeswalker and some creatures that have one toughness. Another Gas and Innkeeper, again missing out on one life. But yeah, that Faceless Saven is probably going to be too much for us to handle. Fumarole. Yeah, I'm not gonna have enough red mana to Fumarole and Meteor Swarm. So I guess it's Fumarole plus Inferno, which technically keeps me alive. And then next turn Meteor Swarm for a whole bunch, which actually plays out nicely. If they can kill my dragon, end of turn, untap, animate, faceless saven. Alright, then we're dead. So Soul Shatter should do it here. We're tapped out, faceless saven can get in for four. But you can see how Meteor Swarm would have been pretty decent at cleaning up a whole bunch of one toughness creatures. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. It's gonna be a good Flame Skull hand with all this removal to 
deal with the opposing threats, and then leverage Flame Skull's recursion. Opponent's black white for tells a card. Not sure what that could be. Alright, opponent appears to be stuck on two lanes, so that's promising. And we can replay Flame Skull, unless they exile it with like a Baleful Mastery. We do have a Faceless Haven plus Dragon's Fire to maybe deal 4 damage at some point. Opponent's still stuck on 2. Don't think I'm gonna activate Haven. Feels like they have a removal spell, but just don't want to use it on Flame Skull. So don't want to lose my Haven when I'm happy just dealing three. All right, they found a third lands, but still no plays. Well, I'm happy enough uh, getting in for three again. They will eventually have to deal with Flame Skull. And I'm hoping these burn spells can deal with whatever our opponent does next. Aha, uh -huh, Retribution, so an Angel tribal deck. Okay. So I've got a couple options, but I'm really liking the idea of Animate Haven and then Dragon's Fire. Thanks to the Vigilance, we can even keep Red Mana untapped. So go to Combat, Attack. And after Haven's declared as an attacker, I can still tap it to Dragon's Fire, choosing a dragon, dealing four, and that will leave Frostbite and Shock available. So that was a pretty sweet combo. Can also use Tundra Fumarol to kill a four toughness creature and still animate Haven afterwards. So that was also an option. Another Retribution. So we might do that next. Sure. Showing off all the synergies with Faceless Haven, pretty much. And I guess her opponent's already dead. Yeah, it took him a while to get going, and the Flame Skull was very punishing. Although, nice that our deck is capable of dealing 4 damage, whereas most red decks usually stop at 3, so that uh, fourth point definitely makes a big difference against a 4 toughness angel. So yeah, overall pretty happy with this mono red deck. Got to see plenty of flame skull in action. And of course Goldspan Dragon makes almost every red deck. So at that point it's just a question of how you fill out the rest of your deck. So that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.